I joined the club about November 1962 um, after we, my mother bought a rangefinder camera and we didn't have a lot of success with it. I met a, um, a friend through work, Helen Wiltshire, and she um, invited me to join the Ringwood Amateur Photography Club then. My photographic knowledge was very little. Um, we were having trouble with the rangefinder camera and didn't even know that we needed to have a light meter to go with it. To, um, and once we found that we needed a light meter and we were able to then start to achieve some reasonable images. The, actually the club at that stage had a membership limit of 50 members and most of them I'd say were business people or still working. There may have been an odd person that was retired, but um, most of them, were, I think, were still working. Um, they probably would have all been, well, we had quite young people. I mean, I think that I was only 24 or 25. So we had quite a lot of younger people. Helen would have been the same, um, ranging up to probably, you know, not quite retired. When I joined the Ringwood Amateurs, they met at um, Stan Dobbin's camera shop, um, which I think was known as the Ringwood Camera Centre on the corner of Murray Place and Marinda Highway or Whitehouse Road. Um, we were um, squashed into that little shop um, for most um, competition nights. We didn't do a lot of practical work there. After we left Stan Dobbin's shop, we went to Gallus's poultry farm where we converted a brooder house into um, a club room. Um, all, it was set up so that we could just walk in and walk out, which was really good. And we had a great time at that, um, that venue. Um, we were able to do a lot of practical work that we weren't able to do before. It was called the Chook Shed. And um, we, we had a number of um, funny photos come to us after um, we moved in there with a few people who loved to have a joke with us. Um, the only problem with it was that we lost a few members who didn't go on to, because it was at Vermont, yeah. didn't go on to, um, to continue with the membership at, at Vermont, mm. which was a bit of a shame because we lost a few of our really good, valuable members. The sister clubs developed out of a, a number of us attending um, Victorian Photographic Society conventions. We got to know um, people from Sale and uh, Benalla. Um, quite a few, um, Warrigal was another club, um, quite a few other clubs in Victoria. And it was through um, the APS conventions and a few of us attending APS that APS suggested that there are a lot of country clubs who could do with a sister club relationship and that's when we took on the Dolby Photographic Society which we worked with for many years. The overseas club we, were, um, we um, had a relationship with was um, when one of our members who was a British citizen came to work in Australia. He lived locally and he was eventually take, uh, called back to by his business to England. Mm -hmm. When he went back, um, he sent us uh, an uh, audio visual on Chichester, where he came from. And that was the very first, when we received the audio visual, we decided it was a shame that it was only going to be seen by our club. Mm -hmm. So we started into club competitions by inviting six other clubs to join us and um, view the Chichester audio visual. Some of my memories from the 1960s and 70s were probably around um, weekends away with the camera club members, um, the VAPS conventions when we were meeting other people, seeing a lot of other people's work, um, making friends around, right around the state um, and eventually visiting some of those um, clubs like Kerrang where we had the interclub mm -hmm. relationship, Sale where we had the interclub relationship, Echuca was another one where we had, um, we had various weekends away with them and they came down to visit our club and 
we had a great deal of fun showing people around our area and then going into areas for weekends and learning um, a bit more about some of the country areas that the clubs came from. Some of the members from those earlier decades were um, Stan Matheson, who was a wonderful photographer. Um, he was one of the very first people to receive a first place in the Melbourne International, which got a lot of our club members interested in um, entering nationals and internationals. And Bob Wally, who was very keen um, on practical work and using our cameras in particular, um, we did a great prac night at the poultry farm at Gallus's um, on sound synchronised flash. Um, lots of laugh and lots of blank photos turned up, but we had a really terrific night. And there were lots of people. We did use as many people as we possibly could from membership to, um, to talk to us about things. Albert Law talked a lot about f using flash, particularly in situations like at six o'clock at um, up in um, the Dandenongs chasing lyrebirds, how when the light was so low he had to open up the, the lens two stops more than the flash. Um, those sorts of um, uh, practical nights where we talked about flash and how we needed to, how we could use the flash both on and off the camera um, to achieve what we're wanting to achieve, up to multiple flashes. All sorts of practical work like that we did. We did start um, to talk about pinhole cameras and the original cameras, and then we went through, of course, range finders and then single lens reflex, and then um, other cameras like um, progressed through to digital. Probably the most um, of the members took slides for um, competition work. For quite a few years we didn't have a lot of prints but when we had prints it was mainly black and white home processed and we had a ruling in the in the club rules that we needed to be able to produce our own prints. Um, that was one of the principles of encouraging people to really um, enter their all their own work not to be using someone else to make their prints. But it wasn't until, I suppose, um, cybercrime prints came in and people started to use dark rooms to make colour prints. Even then, we didn't have a lot of print workers working in colour. We mainly had black and white. And for, fortunately, my um, time in the camera club through the 90s meant that I um, missed out on a lot of the early digital work and I didn't get a digital camera until the very end of the 1990s. So that I was really struggling. The change happened so quickly from um, slide images to, um, to digital and printing your own images on, um, on your own home computer. I, of course, had to learn to use the computer to start with, um, which was a a real handicap because you wanted to get on to printing prints but you have to first start to be able to use the, the computer um, and then to learn to use that different camera which was just so different to a slide camera um, and just so great to be able to see your images as soon as you'd taken them instead of having to wait two weeks for your film to come back and it, the whole system changed so much and I got so left behind in those years, it was just incredible. I am amazed at how quickly it changed from slides and, and um, wet dark room to prints. But I do miss the slides. I think slides were great. The slides were great quality. They were, they, you, you could always achieve a really good image that projected well. A lot of club members didn't enter national and international competitions, but we were all, always very keen to have our work representing the club in state competitions and in all the small interclubs. We had interclubs with Camberwell and our own interclub um, and a number of other clubs around. Gradually, Knox had an interclub, Eastern Suburbs had an interclub, so that the interclubs sort of grew over the years 
where we were socialising more with other clubs and competitions were always part of those nights. Um, we did reasonably well in most of those competitions. It was good to be able to select five really good sides and prints to represent the club and see them stand up against the other club's work. Some of the people who really did do well, Stan Matheson, Helen Wiltshire, or who was now Helen Murdoch, um, Stan, uh, Ted Matthews, Bob did a bit, Albert Law was always well in the competition. Um, Yvonne Jonas came into the club along the way and she was a very good worker, very talented, very creative person. Um, it's hard to remember back through 60s and 70s just how many of those um, what how many of those people were so successful. Uh, some of my um, achievements have been um, through working through uh, my competition entries, making them work for me outside in national and international competitions, and gradually through that. I managed to achieve enough um, exhibition acceptances and, and um, placings to achieve, first of all, my LAPS, with, um, which is the licence at the very beginning, first, the first award that you can receive for um, achievement with APS. Um, then I worked on until I managed to achieve my um, AAPS, which is the associate one, which is an achievement where you have to have a far greater number of national and international acceptances amongst your, um, the images that um, you use to uh, um, achieve the, the awards that you, would, um, to re that you were working for. Um, I think probably I fairly regularly had slides representing the club. Um, and I did enjoy photography right across the, the full spectrum. Although we were very keen to photograph native orchids, I was keen on landscape, um, particularly um, landscapes with tr natural trees and, and natural things rather than, um, and, and being very particular about not taking cypress pines and um, things that were not truly native. We became very interested in native natural history. Um, but we had practical sessions and um, we, we had outings to the city. Night photography was a very popular outing each year. Um, but very generally, I was interested in photography. And of course, the competition subjects, where we had set subjects, they were always encouraging you to try something new, try something different. Um, do close up or um, against the light or all the common s subjects that we have now, a bit of experimental, all those things. Um, you just got involved because it was the, co the set subject for the competition. And I enjoyed all of that. It, made, it just stretched you a bit and you learnt so much more um, in doing those when, um, and using your camera to better effect. So I had one. Um, placing in Singapore International at one stage. Um, I tried se for several years and their catalogue was a wonderful catalogue because everyone's accepted images and placings were actually printed in this wonderful catalogue. It was worth entering just to get the catalogue. Then I spread my wings a bit and I entered circuits in um, England, um, England, Ireland, um, Scotland, um, some of the um, lesser known um, islands around England that ran exhibitions. You could send your slides to one exhibition and they forwarded them on to the next and on to the next and on to the next. You could send your slides away and they would be away for 12 months going through various different exhibitions in England. And then we started circuits here in Australia. There was a circuit in Queensland, you sent your images to one, circ one club and it was forwarded, your entry was forwarded on at the end of that exhibition to the next one in Queensland and the next one in Queensland. Tassie did the same thing. Um, New South Wales had a number of 
national exhibitions, but they weren't linked together like the um, other states. And the other states, it was good because you really could prepare slides and just see how they, that same set of slides compared one exhibition to the next in just in Queensland or Tassie. Another exhibition that we were encouraged to enter was the clubs exhibition, where we sent off 20 images to Hungary. Um, I, th I can't remember, I know Essendon sent, um, camera clubs sent off um, images to the same exhibition and theirs was placed third or fourth in the whole of the um, world clubs that were entering at hu in Hungary. We all got certificates from Hungary for just ex having our, um, our entry at Essendon accepted as in second place. But I don't know that Ringwood ever managed a placing, but um, we certainly tried. I was a member of the Ringwood Committee for 23 years. Um, and only a few, only months after I joined, um, at the June annual meeting, I took on the job of secretary of the club, which I then held for 16 years. In the end, we split it because it was difficult to find someone to take over the work that I'd been doing because I also managed all of the interclubs. Um, and we changed it so that the secretary did the minutes and there was a a person to do the letters and correspondence with judges and lecturers and um, all the thank you notes and the other correspondence type um, secretarial work. So I did that for um, 16 years, I think. Then I did two years as vice president, two as president and two as past president, which is the normal term that we had. We had a limit on the number of years that anyone was to be president to, so that no one had had the job for um, too long. There was always someone following on. Then I, um, I had a period off when mum was sick and I didn't get to the club very often, um, just enough really to keep my membership alive. But I was at that stage life member um, and I came back after she, um, after she, after she died. I worked full time the whole time I was a member at uh, Ringwood until 1990 when I had to leave work to look after Mum. Um, mainly um, it was club meetings. We did have a system of phone messages if a club meeting had to be cancelled. We had a roster and one person would ring another person who would also ring another person and so we had a chain reaction to for people to get in touch because we had um, uh, we had no mobile phones and no way of communicating. The social side of the club was mainly um, club meetings. We always had supper at the end, time to chat. We had um, outings that we went to. We always had a great time night, doing night photography around Melbourne and um, the landscapes and, and just visiting, travelling around the country doing um, various things. We'd have weekends away. We had a great time around the Shrine of Remembrance. We always made sure the guards knew who we were, what we were doing. Um, we um, used them. They were happy for us to photograph them, not up close, but um, uh, to include them in our images. And they allowed us to, uh, they always told us what we could and couldn't do, but allowed us to do a lot of things that um, we probably would never have had a chance to do had we just been visiting personally. But they were very accommodating for the club. I had this period off during the 1990s so that I can't speak for the 1990s. But we did um, continue into clubs. I think Dolby was dropped off during the 80s, um, mainly when I stopped. Um, I, w I was a bit more irregular through the 80s, just prior to when Mum got sick with the heart condition and through the 90s when um, I didn't get to club very often at all. Um, they still continued outings like night photography. Um, I don't remember, I, d I wasn't involved in weekends away at that stage. 
um, and I can't speak for the 90s, but there's been a few since the 90s, into the 2000s. Yeah. I've always been interested in native orchids. Um, my mother was interest, in, uh, instrumental in um, encouraging us to um, go down to the bush paddock to um, find orchids from when we were very small. And th th through the middle of the 1970s, I joined the Australasian Native Orchid Society. And I became far more interested, particularly when we could use macro lenses. And I was able to, to achieve a one-to-one -one macro lens, which really helped to um, get a really nice shot of um, some of the very small orchids that we have. This one was taken on slide film with a Pentax. Um, Pentax, it would have been Spotmatic. My, um, I had two Pentax Spotmatics, a, a, a very first one that I bought in Hong Kong in 64, and um, the, a later one that I bought with um, Bayonet Mount. So this, had a, uh, this was a taken on a one-to-one -one macro lens on the Pentax that was a Bayonet Mount was still a Spotmatic. Um, and it was taken at stall, um, on the stall race course actually, um, with a group from the Australasian Native Orchid Society. And the other one is a digital image that I took um, oh, somewhere in the early 2000s, um, down at Port Ferry. It was taken fairly early in the morning, um, nice clear light. Um, I took it from the footbridge, as if anyone knows Port Ferry. You can walk across the footbridge and there's incredible number of images that you can capture from that footbridge. And that was the early morning one, which the light was just nice on the hulls of all the yachts. And I like the crispness of the, and sharpness of the light there. Um, it was an image that pleased me greatly. I do enjoy, um, going back to MPS after the time that I had to give up, um, or almost give up, I didn't quite. I think I managed at least one meeting each year for the period that I wasn't able to be regular. Um, and I do enjoy it, but we've always run the competition night on the first meeting of the month. And I've always enjoyed the judges' comments on the work that was presented by members. I think that it's really helpful and you do get a lot of ideas um, if you listen to the judges. Not always do I agree with a lot of them and having done judging for since the early 1970s myself, although I gave up in the middle of the 1990s, um, I do find that um, I have different opinions about some things. I find photography has changed it changed dramatically with the digital image. Um, but I find that um, I enjoy the, the work that the judges put in and they do put in an incredible amount of time. I think my fondest memories are really connected with the people that I've got to know over the years, long friendships that I've developed both within the club and within the various inter-club groups that, that um, we've had. I still correspond with um, Terry Rayner at Dolby. I still keep in touch with um, people at Sale. Um, my friend at Donald died, unfortunately, so I've lost her. I still have a friend, a cousin in um, Ichuka, so I'm still in touch with people up there. But it's just the friendships that we developed. And around the suburbs, people that um, have come to judge Peter uh, Belmont and um, various people, I can't remember them all off the, off the hat, but you know, really got to know them and um, really do value their friendship and the work that they've done to help. How would I like to see MPS develop? I think it's very hard to foresee the future when you realise the change that happened from slide to digital. Um, now they're talking about mirrorless cameras, which I don't know anything about at the moment. Um, progress with equipment, um, printing and um, computer work is just so incredible. It just is absolutely mind boggling. And to think, to wonder where we're going to be in 10 years time, it's, I think it's impossible to foresee. 
but I think we've got to still um, teach people to use their cameras, help them to enjoy a wide variety of types of images and um, just happily enjoy their um, photography um, overall. And I th I'm sure that photography makes you a very observant person. I know that over the years I've become very observant of, of my surroundings and um, the things that um, I've been involved in. I'm amazed at how a lot of people just don't see, um, don't see the things that I see. You can say to people, did you see so and so? And they didn't see it. And particularly walking through the bush, people just don't know what to look for or don't see. Um, they, um, I find that photography teaches you to see. You're constantly looking for images and trying to find something that's a bit different to fit um, whatever the subject, the competitions that you uh, really want to uh, enter.